Um, just wanted to remind you, one of the reasons we're having this celebration right now is uh, it is HO's 75th and many other anniversaries, Mauna Loa's 50th, Swipsy's 50th. It's Walt's birthday, so happy birthday to Walt. August 20th, he was 100. Forever young, always looking up, that was Walt and his attitude and in his mind, and, and he was just an amazing person. I'm very, very blessed that I got to meet him. Um, it's also Bill Mankin's birthday tomorrow, I happen to find out, so happy birthday to Bill Mankin. <laughs> okay. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing this first speaker in the afternoon session. Maushumi Digpati is a scientist here at HAO. She's been for some time. She's a, actually a recognized leader in the field in flux transport dynamos. She's also a leader in modern data assimilation methods. Um, and despite Yogi Berra saying it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future, um, Maushumi is very good about making predictions and using physics-based models to try to determine what the solar activity cycles are going to be looking like decades from now. So, Mashumi? Thanks for so nice introduction. <laughs> Although the naked eye uh, observations of uh, sunspots go, uh, in China go back to at least 28 BC, the, um, uh, in uh, 1611, the first sunspot was discovered by telescope uh, by Galileo and Harriot. Then in 1843, a German astronomer Heinrich Schabe discovered the sunspot cycle he noticed that the suns he noticed for 17 years that the number of sunspots vary in a cyclic pattern a swiss astronomer rudolf ulf in 1848 compiled schabe's data as well as many other data to reconstruct the sunspot cycle back to 1745 the cycle that started at 1755 is called the first Ulp cycle. This is the one that Ulp reconstructed back. In uh, 1860, the, uh, um, another um, astronomer, Richard Christopher Carrington, discovered differential rotation from sunspots motions. He found, as shown in this schematic diagram, that the sunspots that appear at or near the equator rotates faster than the sunspots that appear at higher latitudes. I mentioned the differential rotation at this point because very soon I will be coming into this uh, to mention how important role it plays in solar cycle. In 1890, uh, Edward Maunder discovered the first butterfly diagram. Um, he, he observed that the um, latitude of occurrence of sunspots evolve in, a, in an interesting fashion. At the beginning of the cycle, the sunspots appear in a latitude belt at 35 degree latitude, and then with the progress of the cycle, that belt migrates towards the equator, and uh, the recurrence of that pattern happens, and when that is plotted in a time latitude diagram, it looks like a butterfly. It was first discovered by Edward Maunder, and therefore it's often called the Maunder's butterfly diagram. The original diagram resides at HO somewhere near the director's office. Um, this is a picture of that. In 1908, George Ellery Hill discovered that the sunspots are the location of strong magnetic fields. Therefore, the solar cycle I was talking about is actually the sun's magnetic cycle. So what causes the solar cycle? If solar magnetic fields were primordial, they wouldn't vary cyclically. Furthermore, if there wouldn't have been regeneration of magnetic fields, all magnetic fields of the sun would have vanished from the convection zone in just 10 years. So the hypothesis was there must be an oscillatory dynamo inside the sun which is responsible for generation and cyclic evolution of the magnetic fields. So what is the nature of that dynamo? 
many scientists across the world along with HO led the um, development of solar cycle models. Whenever um, you see a picture of a scientist, you will know that that scientist either is from HO or had a connection with HO. So milestones in understanding the solar cycle. Jean Parker in 1955 proposed the first solar dynamo model by including the sun's differential rotation and helical turbulence. To understand Parker's model, uh, one needs the, um, this diagram to uh, decompose the magnetic fields into its toroidal and poloidal components. This is the poloidal components that is in the plane of this board and the toroidal compo component is in the azimuthal direction perpendicular to this board. And par already the differential rotation was known by then that the sun's equator rotates faster than the pole. So the generation of toroidal field by shearing a pre-existing poloidal field by differential rotation was quickly discovered. However, it took some time to regenerate back the poloidal field from toroidal field and Parker proposed that regeneration of poloidal field by lifting and twisting of, uh, of a toroidal flux tube by helical turbulence is possible. This is a pure toroidal field. When it goes through hel helical turbulence, it produces this pattern. And um, here uh, in this diagram, one such loop has been amplified. And these open arrows show the lifting and twisting motion. And the solid arrow show one of such loop. Uh, uh, arising a poloidal loop arising from a toroidal flux tube. Therefore, the um, necessary uh, second process to close the dynamo loop, that is the regeneration back of poloidal fields from toroidal fields was discovered and it completes the dynamo loop in this way that poloidal fields uh, are sheared by the differential rotation to generate toroidal fields, then toroidal fields can regenerate back the poloidal fields by helical turbulence or the so-called alpha effect. Parker obtained an equatorial propagating dynamo wave solution. He introduced the concept of magnetic buoyancy to explain how magnetic flux rises to the surface of the sun, and identifying the sun spots as the toroidal flux tubes rising to the surface, their equatorial propagation was explained by equatorial propagating dynamo wave. So in 1950s, Parker's concept of buoyant loop formation was a concept only, but um, now we know it is so real. Here is a buoyant loop formation coming, uh, coming from 3D MHD simulation by Nick Nelson et al. Anyway, I will come back to this um, in the later part of my talk. The uh, conditions for equator or propagating dynamo wave. In order to um, uh, build the mathematical uh, formulation, German school, primarily Steinbeck, Krauss, and Radler, in 1969, developed mean field electrodynamics. They argued that rising convective plume expands into lower density layer. Coriolis force turns the flow vectors to their right. Thus, curl V, less than zero, or clockwise vorticity, is generated. The rising plume has radial velocity positive, Therefore, the kinetic helicity, which is the product of vorticity and radial velocity, is negative in the northern hemisphere of the sun. For isotropic turbulence, the alpha can be defined as uh, the proportional to be proportional to negative of kinetic helicity. Therefore, alpha is positive in the northern hemisphere. Alpha is positive, the con but the condition for equatorward propagation of dynamo wave is the product of alpha and del omega del r negative. Since nothing was known about del omega del r in the entire convection zone at that time, it was assumed that del omega del r is negative in the convection zone. And equatorward propagating dynamo wave was obtained. This is a solution of butterfly theoretical butterfly diagram from uh, Steinbeck, Krauss, and Radler's model. In 1960s and 70s, this remained a favored explanatory model of solar cycle. This is the um, toroidal field from the bottom of the convection zone, um, which this, this diagram, theoretical butterfly diagram, resembles 
well with the observed butterfly diagram. Three D mean field alpha omega dynamo models were built by Michael Sticks um, uh, with the aim of understanding the sector boundary structure, which shows a certain large scale longitude dependence that varies with solar cycle. In 1960s, an alternative concept for identifying the poloidal field generation was proposed by Babcock and Leeton, identifying the poloidal source as arising from the decay of tilted bipolar active regions as shown in this schematic diagram. Babcock and Leeton showed the polar dispersal of the large scale poloidal fields, hence the polar reversal every 11 year can be explained by preferential polar drift of these fields, um, uh, that the trailing flux of these fields by random walk from supergranules. By virtue of origin, the Al babcock leeton type alpha effect is also positive, therefore, but it works not in inside the entire convection zone, but in a thin layer at the surface. And uh, therefore, in order to have equatorward migration, they also needed that del omega del r will have to be negative in the bulk of the convection zone. However, for three decades, 1960s, 70s, and 80s, the uh, Parker Steinbeck Krauss Radler model remained more favored model over Babcock Leeton uh, dynamo models. More observations came long term, uh, Jack Eddy. Um, showed this long term modulation of amplitude of 11 year solar cycle. This is a long term uh, solar cycle pattern, and these uh, yellow circles are the, uh, are the time when the durations of uh, extremely low solar activity. And particularly, the grand minimum that occurred between 1645 and 1715, he named the Mandar minimum. There was a significant overlap between the little ices and the Mandar minimum. Uh, during that time, uh, people used to do ice skating on the canals of Netherlands, and people used to just walk over the Thames River in London to just to cross the river. Whether there was a connection between the little ices and the sun's uh, low activity uh, or sun's grand minimum is still a controversial issue. However, people still believe there is a connection, and people are really hoping that the sun enters the next grand minimum very soon in order to mitigate the effect of global warming. A new search for differential rotation and dynamo model came up in 1980s when Gilman and Miller developed their first full 3D convective dynamo model. They found that the differential rotation uh, contours are cylindrical, that is, they are um, in the so called Taylor Proudman state. And del omega del r is positive instead of the negative del omega del r as required by the alpha omega convection zone dynamos. Whereas they also found that the alpha effect is positive and they found poleward migration of toroidal fields. So either the differential rotation or the dynamo was wrong. This new challenge led to further development of full 3D convective models. Therefore, solar dynamo model developments proceeded on two parallel tracks since 1980s, mean field approach and full 3D convective simulations. The biggest challenge was posed by helioseismology to the dynamo theory in 1990s. Michael Thompson and colleagues showed Convection zone base is located at 0.713 solar radius, below which is radiative zone, and just above is subadiabatic overshoot zone. Tim Brown uh, and colleagues showed there is almost no del omega del r in the convection zone, and strong del omega del r, which is positive, exists at convection zone uh, base at low latitudes, that's called the taco clean. And therefore, again, this came from observations that del omega del r is not negative as required by the alpha omega mean field dynamos is actually positive. Therefore, mean field alpha omega convection zone dynamos do not work for the sun. Furthermore, 
The storage issue of strong toroidal field in the turbulent convection zone became highlighted at that time. The issue came whether the toroidal fields can be stored long enough inside the convection zone to be amplified to the strength needed to produce the sunspot fields or there is a different location where the toroidal fields can be amplified efficiently. Plausible remedies came up um, as one was thin layer dynamos. Um, the uh, two, uh, two grad students in 1990s, Ed DeLuca and Sherry Morrow, and one postdoc, uh, Axel Brandenberg, uh, took part in leading the effort of developing thin layer dynamos, locating the CR layer as well as the alpha effect in a thin layer at the base of the convection zone. So, uh, alpha effect and CR layer overlap in a thin layer at the base of the convection zone. Thin layer dynamos um, were being pursued at that time in HO as well as outside HO, and these models work well. They can produce equator or propagation of dynamo waves. I think Ed De Luca's thesis was on that. Another remedy came up, um, uh, which were interface dynamos. Paul Charbonneau, Keith McGregor, and a grad student Colin Roald led that effort. Um, to explore dy interface dynamos. They located the shear layer just below the core envelope interface and the alpha effect just above that. And uh, that time, um, many others outside HO are developing interface dynamos. Interface dynamos also work well for the sun. They, they can produce equatorward propagation and therefore can explain the butterfly diagram. However, another big challenge came from magnetogram observation. Here is a movie from David Hathaway's magnetogram uh, observations. This movie not only shows that the sun spots vary in number as function of cycle, they propagate equatorward, and the um, diffuse large scale field coming from the decay of these active regions migrate poleward. When plotted in a time latitude diagram, the equatorward propagating sunspot fields and poleward migrating large scale diffuse fields uh, show a nice phase relationship between them. The polar reversal takes place during the sunspot maximum. <laughs> so, in order to explain this magnetic butterfly diagram, a paradigm shift was needed. And Babcock Lytton dynamos came up with a new twist including uh, meridional circulation into it. So, apart from the two processes in the dynamo loop, another third process were um, needed, that is the flux transport by meridional circulation. So, addition of the meridional circulation in the omega effect and alpha effect process, uh, note that this alpha effect is babcock lytton type alpha effect that arises from the decay of active regions. So, um, these three processes can explain babcock lytton dynamos, which were named babcock lytton flux transport dynamos. And um, the large scale poloidal fields can migrate poleward, cause polar reversal by the poleward surface flow, whereas the bottom toroidal field can migrate equatorward by the equatorward subsurface return flow. And therefore, this class of model does not uh, need uh, to satisfy, uh, does not need the alpha o del omega del r less than 0 to be satisfied. The equator word propagation can be governed by the advected transport of magnetic flux um, by meridional circulation. In 1990s, many people along with um, HO worked in this class of model and produced the butterfly diagram. Here is the theoretical butterfly diagram. The contour shows the equatorward propagation of toroidal fields and the uh, shades the surface radial field that shows the poleward migration and polar reversal with correct phase relationship. This is the observed NSO map of longitude average photospheric fields. Uh, these models can produce many solar cycle features very well and can be calibrated for the sun. And the two scientists who helped a lot in calibrating the dynamo are Juliana and Dick White. These models were developed in the dynamical regime by Matthias Rempel, 
uh, to explain the sun's torsional oscillation. The torsional, torsional oscillations are alternating prograde and retro, retrograde rotations on top of the average differential rotation. He included J cross B back reaction force and uh, simulated the high latitude um, torsional oscillation with uh, Babcock Lytton flux transport dynamos. In order to explain the low latitude torsional oscillation, he included the J cross P back reaction along with thermal effect and simulated uh, uh, the low latitude torsional oscillation well. 2D Babcock Lytton flux transport dynamos um, uh, have, been, have, been able, uh, uh, have been able to. Um, reproduce many solar cycle features. Therefore, the natural um, step forward was to build a prediction scheme based on this class of model. And um, myself with my colleagues built the prediction scheme and issued three predictions for cycle, solar cycle 24. A delayed onset of cycle 24, a strong cycle 24, and south stronger than the north. Out of these three predictions, this, this one has been validated, however, this one has not been. Solar cycle 24 has not been strong. Again, south has been stronger than the north. There could be various reasons for the failure in amplitude prediction. So um, um, here are a few. The Pathy et al. 2006 did not consider phase shift between north and south. However, north and south show significant phase shift and particularly in the, the, this cycle, the phase shift between north and south was about three years. If there wouldn't have been that phase shift, if the north and south would have overlapped, then perhaps the solar cycle 24 wouldn't have been that weak. So if north and south would have overlapped, this would have been the strength. And um, the causes of this north-south asymmetry in solar cycle are being investigated in more details by my PhD student Bernadette Bellus, and it's going to be her PhD thesis. More propositions came that wrong tilts of a few large spots at the end of cycle 23 may have reduced the poloidal seed field. And data nudging may not have been perfect. Data was nudged by Dikpati et al for entire 12 cycles without frequent updates. So um, even the failure of this amplitude prediction have taught us something to uh, go forward to refine the prediction scheme for cycle 25 prediction. 3D Babcock Lytton flux transport dynamos have been built in the leadership of Mark Mish. Here is a result from his simulations. At low latitude, small scale features appear due to eruption of tilted bipolar spots, but their dispersal by diffusion and meridional circulation produces mm, mean polyidal fields and cause polar reversal. Trailing flux in the time latitude diagram, the trailing flux um, towards the poles in a series of streams um, can cause the polar reversal. And the toroidal butterfly diagram show equatorward migration. Cycle period is again governed by the meridional circulation flow speed. As I mentioned, um, since 1980s, the solar um, dynamo model development proceeded into parallel tracks. So HO is leading some of the full 3D convective dynamo simulations. Mission colleagues uh, uh, are doing uh, simulations. Um, uh, in faster rotating sun, and uh, I already mentioned Nelson et al. results of buoyant loop formation. Augustson et al., Kyle Augustson is Mark's postdoc, and there are two more um, grad students, uh, Kane Fee and um, Daniel, uh, for whom I couldn't collect the picture, sorry about that. Um, they found uh, the cycle as well as in the long-term simulation, they found some grand minima type features. In another simulation, another effort, Yu Hong Fan and Fang Fang are doing full 3D convective dynamo simulations um, in solar -like, uh, with solar-like interior condition. They find that um, the, the so their solar convective dynamo is driven by radiative heat transfer 
and one very interesting feature is that the they showed that presence of magnetic field is so necessary in order to uh, do the self consistent maintenance of the solar light differential rotation that is equator rotating faster than the pole here is a movie from their simulation outlining toroidal flux loops show the um, buoyant loop formation with the tilt patterns that can be compared well with observation so i came to my summary of the talk first solar dynamo models was built in uh, 70 uh, built 70 years ago babcock lewton flux transport solar dynamos were created as a paradigm shift to overcome challenges posed by helio seismology and magnetic butterfly diagram and remain as a leading class of solar dynamo models full 3d convective dynamos were continuing are continuing in a parallel track since the first model of gilman and miller in 1981 and have reached the level that they self consistently produce cycles and flux emergence ato has always been one of the leaders in both dynamo approaches 3d babcock lewton dynamo models are progressing for operating in a data assimilative mode and hence are showing prospects for improvements in predictions however the ultimate goal is to merge the two parallel approaches and build a grand solar dynamo model thank you Thank you. That was a wonderful talk. Questions? Since uh, I'm a representative of the German school in a way, uh, thank you for that uh, nice overview. But for historical clarity on the Uh, really underlined Steinbeck, Krause, and Redler at the time were working in East Germany under very difficult uh, conditions, and uh, the step forward that they did, uh, uh, I think, is in that context uh, even more remarkable. Uh, and and the other point I wanted to. Uh, make as you refer to this recent grand maximum in uh, the solar uh, cycle and uh, i think very recently uh, swagat et al i think came forward with a very careful reanalysis of uh, the uh, sunspot numbers as uh, they are available and came to the conclusion that there had to be a recalibration and the consequence of that is that there is no grand maximum uh, and i think in in sort of going forward from here uh, that is that is a very important new finding uh, otherwise uh, uh, you are uh, overview was was really very nice and very gave very good uh, uh, examples of this this very difficult field thank you thank you michael i'm sorry that not uh, i did not mention solgard's effort actually when i practiced last night it took 27 minutes oh, yeah. i thought today to today morning when i practiced i it will be little less than 27 minutes but it again took 27 minutes then i was little nervous to add more material and regarding your first point <laughs> um steinbeck kraus and uh, parker steinbeck kraus and radler um concept in the present day babcock lewton flux transport dynamos is the combination of babcock lewton alpha effect as well as parker steinbeck kraus and radler concept so it's a combined thing actually Uh, Mr. Me, um, as you know, the flux transport dynamos work particularly well when the meridional circulation is a single cell. It runs either all the way to the pole, or it's at least to 60 degrees. Maybe there's a small second cell there. But recently, there have been some inferences from helioseismology that there might be a second meridional circulation underneath 
the one we see at the surface that goes in the opposite direction. Can you comment on what that might mean for uh, flux transport dynamo models? Actually, that means quite terrible for the flux transport dynamo <laughs> models. Now, um, <laughs> actually, that, uh, I, I haven't yet um, accepted that view um, because uh, it's so difficult to theoretically reproduce the second cell in depth. Um, it's, it's easy to um, it's, it's easy to produce multiple cells in latitude, but it's so difficult to produce two cells in depth, like that what Stanford uh, group has found. So I'm waiting uh, for more theoretical input from theorists, as well as more observations to confirm that um, second cell in depth. And if really that comes out to be the case, then we are on the verge of another paradigm shift in solar dynamo model. Thanks, Maojumi, for your very interesting historical overview of all the people that have, have gone through HAO and have contributed to solar dynamo research. I would like to follow up on Michael's comment where he was talking about the work of, uh, of, of the German school. It, it was an important time when uh, Michael Sticks from Germany, from West Germany, was actually a postdoc at uh, HAO. And uh, Paul Roberts was interested in understanding dynamo theory, but everything was just written in German. So. Uh, he used Michael Sticks to uh, translate the whole thing, and everything was published in the NCAR technical note, which is extremely famous in dynamo theory. So without that, uh, I would, for example, would not have gotten the whole hold of this uh, remarkable piece of many, many of work of represented through many, many papers. So I think this was an important contribution of NCAR and HO. Thank you. Let, let's thank Mashumi Mas again, please. Thank you.